Chapter 9 is about different types of roots, square roots, cube roots, and then also this really important, powerful, timeless formula called the Pythagorean Theorem. So the first question is, what number multiplied by itself equals 25? Well, in your head you might have said 5, which is not wrong, but it's just not complete. It could also be negative 5. And the reason is that a negative times a negative is a positive. So negative 5 times itself gives us positive 25. This number, or numbers in that case, is called a square root. Because when you multiply it by itself, you get the original number. So what we would say is the square root of 25 is 5. Or negative 5 is the square root of 25. So you can say it either way. Now, not all numbers have two square roots. Only positive numbers have two square roots. Technically, you can't take the square root of a negative, but that's for a different conversation. Zero, on the other hand, only has one square root, which is the number zero, because there's no such thing as negative zero. Then there's another word, which I know you've used before, but maybe not in a long time, and the phrase is perfect square. And a perfect square is a number that has an integer as its square root. All positive numbers have square roots. Like the square root of 16 is 4, or negative 4. But let's just say 4 for now. The square root of 16 is 4 because 4 times 4 is 16. There's no friendly square root of, let's say, 23 because no friendly integer multiplied by itself gives us 23, so we would get some sort of decimal. So we would say 16 is a perfect square, but 23 is not a perfect square. So example one asks us to just say what the two square roots of 49 are. So you think what number times itself is 49. That just come pretty quickly to you. It's 7, uh, but also, like we said earlier, it could be negative 7. This symbol that I used up here is called a radical sign. So now my joke over here on the right maybe makes sense to you. I don't know if people say that anymore, but it used to be a slang way of talking back in the 90s. And when I used the square root symbol up here, up top, I said it equals 4, and that's correct. Because if I wanted negative 4, I would have to write negative square root 16. That's negative 4. So when you see the symbol, you automatically assume that the person is asking for the positive version. So we would put a negative sign in front of the symbol if we wanted to know the negative answer. But up here in example one, it didn't give us the symbol. It just said find the two square roots. So that means that they wanted both numbers. Now just for some nice terminology, the number under the radical sign is called the radicand. So now when we go down to example two, there's some new ones, and then there's also some ones that we have done before, like number one, what is the square root of 36? Since it doesn't give us the symbol, then we're going to write both numbers, 6 and negative 6. When we look at number two, you see they just want the negative answer. So the square root of 64 is 8. So we're going to write negative 8. Number three might look a little freaky to you, but really you just split it up and do it separately. So for this one, you just do the square root of four over the square root of 25. Those are both friendly perfect squares. So you would get two over five. And we're not gonna do the negatives because they don't give us the negative sign. Now for number four and number five, I would like you to pause the video and get yourself out your calculator because your calculator should have a square root symbol on it somewhere. So take a moment, get your calculator, and look for the square root symbol. Now, depending on your calculator, you might need to press it before or after the number. So you might press the square root symbol and then do 0.81, 
Or if your calculator is a different calculator, you might do 0.81 and then press the square root symbol. So it just depends on what type of calculator you have. And you'll know that you have figured it out when you get 0.9 as your answer. So this is one method. This is a second method. Your calculator will only do it one way. And when you get 0.9, then you have learned the order that your calculator wants it. Now, number five, you're going to do the same thing, but don't freak out about this symbol. What this symbol is saying, it's saying that the answer should be the positive and also the negative. The name for this symbol is plus minus. So what they want is they want both answers, the positive and the negative. So type it into your calculator, find the square root of 12.25. You should have 3.5. So you can write 3.5 comma negative 3.5. Or if you want to use that symbol, then you would write positive negative or plus minus 3.5. So what this means is 12.25 and 0.81 are not perfect squares, but 36, 64, 4, and 25 are. Because in numbers 1, 2, and 3, we got integer answers. And in numbers 4 and 5, we did not. We're going to follow the order of operations in example three. So why don't you pause the video and just do number one. Not all three examples, just number one. And then when you have it, press play. All right, so I did the square root of 36, which was six, multiplied by five, and added seven. When you're doing order of operations, you should know Gemdas from seventh grade. But what we do now is now that we talk about radical signs, we're going to squeeze them in and they have a special spot in Gemdas and they go after exponents. So what we're doing now is we're actually doing Gemdas. So you do grouping symbols, exponents, now you squeeze in radicals if there are any, multiplication, division, and addition, subtraction. All right, let's do number two together. Um, when we did the last example, I told you to break it apart, and I told you to do the square root of 18 over the square root of 2. But neither of those are perfect squares. No number times itself is 18, and no friendly integer times itself is 2. So we're actually not going to do that method. What else we can do if we don't have perfect squares is we can just divide 18 divided by 2. So what I'll get is 1 fourth plus the square root of 9. And 9 is a perfect square because 3 times 3 is 9. So I get 1 fourth plus 3, which is 3 and 1 fourth. And then when you go to number 3, let's see what happens. The square root of 81 is 9. And 9 squared is 81. So you say, wait a second, that looks really familiar. That was from the original question. And there's a note down here for you to read. Squaring and square rooting undo each other. So the word that we use for them is inverse operations. So if you're trying to get rid of a square, you would square root or vice versa. Leading us to example four. When you start to see exponents inside equations, remember, the rule is gemdas backwards. And now we're just going to do germdas backwards. So first we're going to look for subtraction or addition. Then we'll look for multiplication and division. Then we're going to look for radicals, then exponents, and then grouping symbols. So in letter A, I don't have anything other than an exponent. So I can skip all the way here. And I just showed you that squaring a number and square rooting are opposites, and they undo each other. They're inverses. So if I want to get rid of the square in letter A, I'm going to square root both sides. And what that does is it makes that two exponent go away. Because remember, when you're solving an equation, the goal is to get the x by itself. And technically, it was not by itself because it had an exponent. So the square root of 81 is 9. But in this case, we're also going to write negative 9 
because the original equation didn't have the square root symbol, so we don't know whether they wanted 9 or negative 9. When you put the symbol, you have to say both. When the question gives you the symbol, then it tells you whether it wants positive or negative. In letter B, when we do germ dos backwards, the first thing that we're going to hit, it was going to, we're going to hit multiplication. So let's undo the multiplication by dividing. So you divide both sides by 3. So we get a squared equals 16. And now I'm going to square root both sides. And you get that a equals 4. But again, it also could be negative 4. And since we put the symbol, we need to say both because we don't know whether they want positive or negative. All right, last one into a word problem. The area of a crop circle is 45,216 square feet. What is the radius of the crop circle? So they give us a plan. We have the area. We are asked to find the radius. So we're going to use the formula A equals pi r squared. You should have learned that in an earlier grade. We haven't used it yet this year but you should know it already. If you don't, then now you do. And what we're going to do is just plug in what we have. We're going to plug in this for the area, and then obviously we'll use 3.14 for pi. In high school, you might leave it as the pi symbol, but in eighth grade, don't worry about it. And then we'll just solve for r. So let's do it. 45,216 equals... 3.14 r squared. So when we do germ dos backwards, the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the multiplication. So we're going to divide by 3.14. I'll pause while you type that in your calculator. You should have 14,400. And now we don't have the R by itself. It's really deceiving because it looks like it's by itself, but it's not. We have to square root to get that exponent to go away. So the square root of 14,400, you type that in your calculator, you get 120. So it's 120, find the label, feet. All right, if you have any questions, write them down, and I'll talk to you soon.